So this video is a, a demo of how to uh, write and run assembly programs on Stu. Uh, so there are uh, emulators available and simulators, uh, but you don't really need them because you can just write x86 assembly and compile it using GCC. And I wanted to, to show you how to do that because I would encourage you to play with that as you are learning these things. So I'm uh, on Stu. I'm in a temporary folder. Uh, again, your console is probably going to look a little bit different than mine because I have uh, I'm using Z shell and I have some theming uh, applied to it. Um, but in any case, uh, what we want to do is we want to create a file and put some assembly code into it. So uh, I'm just going to use nano for this. Uh, so I'm going to create a file called test.s. Uh, and then I'm going to put in the uh, template from the slides. So that's uh, global main. That sets up the main um, symbol. Uh, and then there's our, uh, there's our label marking the beginning of main. Uh, and then we're going to just uh, put in a placeholder here, which moves the value of 0 into RAX and then uh, returns. Um, so that's an instruction we didn't really talk about during uh, the lecture, but uh, it just ends the, the main function. OK, so I'm going to press uh, Control-X to save it, and I tell it that I want to save it, uh, or Control-X to end, and then I tell it that I wanted to save it. So let's make sure that that's there. So there's the file. So we'll compile this using GCC, using the same uh, sort of syntax that we might do with just a .c file. Uh, and GCC will compile this, no problem. Uh, and so uh, we could run this program. Um, and then uh, you, you'll see that it's not, it doesn't print anything. Um, it does return 0. So the last value that's in RAX at the end of your program is considered that program's return value. Um, so we can actually take a look at that. Uh, by uh, running echo dollar sign question mark, um, and then we can verify that that's that's uh, we can verify that that's actually what's happening um, by going in and changing this value. So let's change this value to seven, for instance. So I'm going to save this and then exit, uh, and then I will recompile. I will rerun it, and then I will uh, echo the return value. Uh, and so there, you can see now that the return value is seven. You can also see that my console is, is sort of highlighting this because typically a non-zero error, uh, a non-zero return value from a program is considered uh, to be an error code. Okay, um, so that's great, but as I mentioned, you're probably more likely to want to be able to step through an assembly program. So uh, I have pre-prepared the quiz, uh, the the code from the quiz. So that's in a file here called quiz.s. So this is just uh, the code that we uh, looked through uh, in that last uh, mini lecture video. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and compile this. So this will be compiled to uh, a program called quiz. Dot, or just quiz. Uh, and so now what I'm going to do is I am going to, well, let's, let's first make sure that it does what we think it's going to do. So uh, there's the return value of 4, as we uh, said when we uh, worked through that problem. So let's uh, let's work through it in GDB. So uh, we'll load a quiz inside of GDB. Again, we can ignore all this stuff that it prints at the very beginning. Uh, and then let's go ahead and use the start command to get us to the beginning of main. So uh, it says we're here at the beginning of main. We can use the disassemble command to list out all the assembly code instructions in main. And so here you can see uh, that these are, roughly speaking, the instructions that uh, we had in our code. So there was move 5 into RCX, uh, 0 into RAX, compare 0 with RCX, jump to skip if they're equal. And you'll notice here that it has actually filled in uh, an instruction address here. So that's part of what the assembler does. Uh, and then finally, add RCX to RAX. So uh, there are a couple of different ways to step through this program. Um, so uh, let me just show you sort of the simplest one. So the first thing we might want to do is to examine the value of RCX and RAX at the very beginning. So the next, the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to set RCX to 5. So let's uh, see what RCX is right now. So we want to print uh, RCX. And remember that in GDB, you have to use the uh, dollar sign rather than the percent. 
So that's the current value of RCX, um, which is just you know whatever it was before this program started executing. Uh, and then uh, our AX is you know similarly some some value that is irrelevant here. So we're going to go ahead and run the next instruction. So in I. Uh, and you can see that now we are at the next instruction. So if we were to disassemble, uh, you can see that we are now at this next instruction. So that's indicated by this arrow here on the left. So we've executed this first move. So that means that if we were to now print the value of RCX, now it's five. All right, uh, we determined that the next instruction would set RCX or RAX to zero. Uh, and in fact, it did. Uh, and then the next, so now we are at the compare instruction. So we'll go ahead and run that. Uh, that actually sets the flags register. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, the details aren't important right now. Um, but now we're at that jump instruction, which is going to perform a jump if a or if RCX and zero were equal. They are not. So we're not going to take that jump, which means that we're now on that last add instruction. Um, and uh, after we execute that, that will go to um, the subtract instruction, which GDB thinks is in a different function because of the label that we put there for skip. Um, it's not really a different function. Um, so there's the subtract instruction. So the add instruction should have changed RC or RAX to five. So there it is. And then this next instruction should change RAX to four. And then uh, we get to the re return instruction, at which point we jump out to some uh, code that isn't in our program, and we're, we're essentially done. So um, the one other thing, I guess, from the slide is info registers. So that prints all of the register values. And you can see that there are quite a few of them, uh, some of which we have not talked about yet. Uh, and so you probably won't want to use this view all the time, but it, it can be useful. Um, so the last thing I'm going to do is just show you a slightly different view that might be useful and teach you one more command uh, that I find useful here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart the program. So I'm just going to use the start command to go back to the beginning of main. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show you the text user interface for GDB. So I'm going to press Control X and then 2. And what that's going to do is it's going to put me into this uh, interface that is still a textual interface, although it's more graphical than uh, the uh, basic default interface. And you can see that it's highlighted the next instruction to execute there. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on a display. So a display is something that it's going to print uh, after every instruction uh, or um, every time that the debugger pauses, uh, it will print the value. So I want to print RAX, and I want to print RCX every time uh, we execute an instruction. So now I can NI to go to the next instruction. And you can see now that we have set RCX to 5. In GDB, you can rerun the previous command just by pressing Enter. So now I can press Enter, and it advances to the next instruction, and it shows me uh, the new values of RAX and RCX. And so now I can just step through this program one instruction at a time and see how the values are changing as each instruction executes. So um, I hope that that was useful. Uh, and again, I hope that uh, you will uh, become comfortable with using these tools. Uh, I really think that they'll help you learn these concepts uh, and um, will uh, you know, give you a, a greater uh, appreciation for how these things work uh, on, on a lower level.